Okay, what we're doing today is we're doing a demo vehicle for Lou, who has turned his entire blazer into a sub box. So you can see it's already been dynamated. The ceiling has already been put up with two layers of oak with spray foam everywhere. You can hear how solid it is. Uh, down here, same thing. What we do is we attach, uh, I made strips that fit over um, some sort of a mounting hardware back here. And then we screwed the strips down. And then we were able to screw down the wood to the strips. Same, same thing happened on the lower deck here. Found some strips, anchored them down, and then we were able to go onto our wood. Uh, just directly start screwing the wood. Then you can see all the uh, over the all the foam that has uh, uh, came out from all the cracks. Uh, up here, you can see more of the roof. Uh, up at the front, we've already uh, same thing in the front. Too. Dynamited all the way through. Uh, and then um, and then we put bed liner on it so the, the piece would look nice. I'm getting ready to bring in the triple the triple baffle, which is right here. I just did a uh, flush trim bit to uh, trim it up to my other piece, but I've got to take this piece back off. So what I've done is I've uh, I've just drilled me some 3 8 inch holes uh, almost all the way through the board. And then I will take these dowels when I'm ready to put the piece back on. I'll take these dowels and I'll hammer them down in there and that will line up both pieces again so that I have this nice smooth, uh, perfectly flush edge all the way around. Okay, let me show you how far I've gotten today. I've got the uh, sides put on. You can see them right over there. Um, and then I've got all these little braces that you see. And what I'm doing is I started out a little bigger than I needed to be so I could work my way down and get it, get this thing exactly down to where he wanted it to be in the volume for his ratio. So as I add a brace, I simply just subtract what the brace comes to. So like that little brace that you're looking at right there, that only takes up about 0 0.06 cubic feet. So all you do is you just uh, you just add up all your braces in here, add up all the volume and subtract it. And as I go along, anything I add, I just make note of it. And as I put it into the lower chamber, I subtract out the volume. Some of these braces weren't even needed, um, but I needed to get rid of some volume down in this chamber. So I, the weakest part of this chamber is going to be the seams all the way around I thought <clears throat> so that's where I'm bulking this thing up at the lower chamber is going to take the most pressure in this system because it's going to be a sealed chamber with 415s fire 418s excuse me firing into it PSI platform fives and so this is the chamber that I'm most concerned about because the upper chamber has got a vent to relieve pressure. This chamber has nowhere to go. But the next part is to add the baffle. And we ran into a snag um, when we were building this. As you can see, the, ro the roof slopes down. And I did not take that into account into my calculations. So we lost a cubic foot from the roof slope. So I had to make that room up somewhere. And by this time, the baffle had already been made. I'll show it to you right here. It's a triple baffle. <clears throat> True triple baffle. Because these subs are going to be inverted. So the sub, usually the sub is pointed down into the sealed chamber, the motor. But that's where all the heat is. And we want the subs to run cool. So that subs are going to be running inverted into the upper chamber, in the ported chamber. And that should cool them off, keep the motors a little cooler. But for that reason, we went with a true triple baffle. This is all um, void-free oak. And um, 
when I lost my cubic foot, I had to get it back somewhere. So I've had to extend my baffle out an inch and a half. And that's going to get me back where I want to be. And that's the next thing to install. It's going to be one long center brace. And that's what you see right there. It'll have one long brace running all the way down the middle. And then it'll have another brace that tees up and holds that brace. That should be more than enough strong. So the next part is to get this last brace in. Do some caulking around all the seams just to be triple sure. And then I can load the baffle in and then build the side walls up to the roof. Alright, I got the center brace in. You can see the block. That's uh, just an extra little block there. And I can just show you that the whole car is rocking anywhere you grab any of these walls they're not moving so it's time to slide the baffle in okay now you're gonna find with these car builds things change constantly because until you put a scrap of wood everywhere on this roof or on any of these body contours um, I mean I, I planned it out as best I could but there are little nuances that you have to change and one of the things that uh, we found out was that uh, I needed to put a slight one and a half degree angle right here on this board and I'll show you why we'll be connecting up right up through here and going all the way up and so letting this board catch the screws catch it back this way this is a little scrap piece that I've made and I'll show you so it fits right up in there and that's the angle before I had a slight gap at the bottom so now all my gap is gone everything looks good up all the way here so now I can just sheet it straight back and then I'll add another second piece um, to this board that you're looking at it'll get a secondary piece inside of it that overlaps inside this wall and that should give it a, a great deal of strength Okay, another thing I want to show you, uh, you may not think it's a big deal, but um, you know, you want to watch for these little things. I, I'm just the one person here uh, building this and all these pieces are pretty heavy. So uh, I've got to put glue now down on all the uh, matching surfaces. And there's one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put it all on and then slide your piece in because you're going to do nothing but uh, remove the material that you've spread around. So I've got these spacers. I'll put all the glue down and then I'll remove the spacers just pull them out one at a time and then the top should lower down to about where it needs to be and then I'll have to uh, move it a little over I'm sure just a little bit but for the most part all the glue will stay uh, where I applied it at okay uh, it's really sunny so I don't know how good you can see but I just wanted to show you uh, the overlaps so this this board's tucked into here which is tucked in up here in between the two pieces as you'll see right here so you have one solid piece there tucked in and then your next piece right there you can see it it overlaps and there's the overlap so you can see that beautiful overlap right there that seals off your joint and gives you an extremely strong uh, joint so uh, that is a really good way to get everything super strong in here. trim to go along in the uh, oak the oak box so uh, I'm uh, trimming planing this down to uh, three quarters of an inch okay let me show you about that walnut we were just making you can see I've got those two pieces in and then across the front gives you a really nice contrast um, this one could make this box so strong though no. I've got pockets up in the ceiling they're plugged now that's grabbing this outer board this inner board 
has got pockets going up on the inside that you can't see. So it's grabbing the roof and pulling it down. This piece, the, the roof is also grabbing the outer piece and pulling it back this way. And then of course they're all glued. And then you've got, so that's, that's an overlap there covering up this seam for no air leaks. And then you've got another one here, another overlap here. And this is all has been uh, puttied up anyway. And then, um, but with the putty and the overlap, I mean, you're not gonna get any sort of an air leak. Uh, this trim, not only does it look good, but it's going to reinforce the putty. So let's just say, worst case scenario, um, a piece of the putty's real thin somewhere. And for some reason, the pressure starts to poke a hole through it. Well, it would get through the first layer. But then it would never get through this layer. But now with the trim that's going up, it's gonna protect the putty. So this thing should be super tight and super strong. Here you can see I'm making the, um, I'm making this final corner. And I've got two corners there. So that's a compound angle. And they're hard to make. They're no fun to make for sure. But here is the piece that I made. And it's a pretty good fit. And I nail that sucker in there. And this thing will almost be done trimmed out. Okay, these are the, this is the back wall. And it's gonna get a 24 by 16 piece of uh, three quarter inch acrylic put in the back wall. And then I'm gonna trim it out with walnut. And uh, this is the light string that's going in. And uh, these are the nicest lights you can, that I've come across that you can get uh, just with all the patterns that these, these things come with chasing. It's really gonna make this, uh, the acrylic look like the letters are swirling in certain patterns. And I'll walk you through to the, uh, the laser where we are currently burning from this side. You can see, I don't know if you can, probably can't see that, but there you go. You can see the laser cutting out, uh, etching part of the PSI. So I got the glass in, and you can see the um, lights are going through all their patterns. This is one that I really like. Oh, there's so many of them though. And there's the window in the box, mounted. You can see here, this is simply just an access door to get the subs in and out. Um, he has two doors that actually fit in here. Here's one of them. This is a 12 by 12. And then we have another 15 by, we have a 15 by 15 in here. And each of these doors will change the setup slightly. Just to look at the side, see what you get when you open the doors. I look at the back. Uh, we'll be mounting this control panel. I'll let him decide, but you know, probably up here or so. And then all this is going to get spray foamed from here all the way over. <laughs> 